please allow me to introduce you to a Republican congressman named Mark Kirk, a young, handsome member of Congress from the great state of Illinois. He's something of an ambitious rising star in the Republican Party. He's in his fifth term in the House of Representatives. He's hinted that he might run for governor of Illinois, might be interested in running for the U.S. Senate seat, embarrassingly occupied by Roland Burris right now. And, you know, when you are a member of the lower house of Congress looking to move up and you want to improve your international standing, your foreign policy bona fides, one of the things you do is you take foreign trips, which Congress makes wicked easy to do. Congressman Kirk recently took a trip to China, whereupon he did something that, more than anything else in his career, is likely to make him famous. And not for a good reason. Congressman Mark Kirk traveled to China to take meetings with the Chinese government to tell the Chinese government that they shouldn't trust America anymore. They shouldn't trust the American government. Specifically, they shouldn't trust what our government says about our finances, particularly when the Chinese are evaluating whether or not to keep extending more credit to us. Yes, Mark Kirk is actually an American and a member of Congress who did this. Upon returning from China, Congressman Kirk bragged publicly at the Center for Strategic and International Studies about what he had said and done on this Chinese trip. Check it out. One of the messages I had, because we need to build trust and confidence, and our number one creditor is that the budget numbers that the U.S. government have put forward should not be believed. Wait, 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 wait. What did Congressman Kirk just proudly proclaim to have said to our nation's largest debt holder? The budget numbers that the U.S. government have put forward should not be believed. That's what you told China? A sitting member of Congress went to China and told the Chinese government not to trust our country's budget numbers. Okay, China holds more than $750 billion of our national debt. They are our single largest creditor. If China called in that debt, if they decided to follow Congressman Kirk's advice and suddenly judge that their debtor, that would be us, is no longer trustworthy, that we shouldn't be believed when we tell them it's safe to take up more of our debt, do you know what would happen? Well, have you heard of that foreclosure crisis, like where the bank takes a house back? We, America, we're in the house. China is the bank that owns the house. Foreclosure would not be pretty at this level. Furthermore, Congressman Kirk has also spoken out since that trip to broadcast the idea that our biggest creditor, China, is getting nudgy about holding open our line of credit. What's happening is China is beginning to cancel Congress's credit card. Doesn't want to lend much more money to the United States. So Congressman Mark Kirk just wants to make it clear to any other countries out there, any other potential creditors who might want to lend us money that we might say need, well, China doesn't think it's such a good idea to lend us money anymore. And he's advising them that we can't be trusted anyway. Thanks, Congressman Kirk. We'll see you in the soup line. Wow. Joining us now is David Widener. He's a Wall Street columnist for Market Watch. David, thanks very much for coming back on the show. Thanks, Rachel. Um, he said he was doing this because we need to build trust and confidence in our number one creditor. Is he, I mean, is that sarca sarcasm, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any idea what that it was? It was a colossally stupid thing to say. Yeah. And I think that had it been someone of some import, of some authority from this country, we might have seen a real international in incident in terms of economic credit uh, for this country across the globe. But I think, fortunately, the world kind of knows where this is coming from. This is, a, this is a brawl in the U.S. between two parties. And uh, he went on the global stage, brought it onto the global stage, and created, um, really added to the tension between us. But I don't think it's going to be a meltdown. In order to understand the risk that he potentially caused us, even if he's too small a fry to have actually, in, actually started that sort of a crisis, what would happen if China took Congressman Mark Kirk's advice? I mean, China's our biggest creditor. If they decided that the full faith and credit of the United States wasn't worth anything, what could they do? Well, I don't want to understate what, what he did. I mean, what he did was, was we have a fragile relationship with China in terms of our, our economic standing with them, our credit with them. And any time you get someone um, talking contrary to what you're... Uh, position to the rest of the globe is it, it's a dangerous thing mm. and, it, and, it, and, it, and it upsets the, upsets the balance. Um, you know, in, in terms of What's the what could they do? What could they do? Well, I think what they could do is start curtailing their purchase of U.S. debt. Yeah. You know, because we're running about 100 or, or $1.8 trillion debt this year, we're going to have to sell more bonds overseas. China is going to have to buy them. 
they could not be in the market. You know, they could, they could not buy as much as we expect. We'd have to pay higher interest rates. And then our interest on the debt, the, the single biggest thing that we pay for as taxpayers is going to get bigger and bigger. And so we're going to, uh, you know, maybe inadvertently, he's making the problem an exponentially bigger problem. And just, just to be clear here, for those of us who don't always think easily in terms of supply and demand like you do mm -hmm. <laughs> in terms of that, uh, at MarketWatch, as long as China is buying so much of our debt, that means we essentially pay lower interest on what we owe. That's right. And if it was harder to sell our debt, we need to make our debt more attractive. We need to promise to pay higher interest rates. And the interest that we pay on our debt that we owe right now, you're saying, is already the most expensive. It's the single the thing biggest expense for the government right we now. We spend more on that than we do in That's the Pentagon. Right. That's right. So the congressman tells them that they should lose faith in us, and that means America's financial condition goes that much further down the tubes. Um, is there a precedent for the sort of thing that Congressman Kirk did, for a junior congressman to go overseas and have this sort of a, tell a, tell a crucial foreign government something like this? Well, you know, I, I can't think of anything in terms of economic policy, in terms of global credit, uh, that somebody's made misstatements. I mean, Tim Geithner, after he took the job, uh, made some misstatements that sent the currency markets into a tizzy and the U.S. dollar, you know, was destabilized for a little bit. Mm -hmm. um, so, so little things do, send, do tend to set things off. But a junior guy like this going over and kind of making this kind of splash, I, I don't recall anything like it. It is the thing that has made Mark Kirk famous. That is the one that we could definitely draw from this. Not our nation's best Captain Kirk, that's for no, sure. absolutely. Uh, David Widener's Wall Street columnist for Market Watch. David, it's always really nice to have you on the show. Thanks for coming in. It's great to come.